Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for another craft with me. And I've been following along with Sonia's craft with me's, but I got behind on the Everything Wings book and now she's working on a boho. So I think I'm going to try and combine those two. But as I was going through some of my papers and everything to choose what I wanted for my book, I found an old thing that I had done and I wanted to come on and show you how to do it because it's really fun. So this is what we're going to make today. It looks more complicated than it is. Um but we are just going to go ahead and make this little tiny journal or whatever you you want to call it but i just think that it's really fun i do believe that i learned this from shannon green and um a long time ago but i just i had so much fun making these that i wanted to show you how to do them it takes three pieces of paper plus you'll need some paper for um for masking so we're going to have just i just have three sheets of copy paper here and i'm going to cut one of them right in half so this is eight and a half by eleven so i'll need five and a half inches approximately there we go pretty close Ooh, really close all righty and then what we're going to do is we are going to just take we're going to take these two that are left over and fold them in half So now we have two that are folded in half and then we are going to take one of the halves and fold it in half this way so we have it folded in half like that and then we're going to take this one and we're going to fold it in half the long way so fold one in half the short way and fold one in half the long way and there we go now to put them together you have your outside cover and then your hit little half a sheet your next large sheet and then your tall half of sheet and so there we go that is the base of our book simple enough now <laughs> to make things a little quicker I do have a long reach stapler but if you do not have a long reach stapler you can just take your pokey tool Put a staple right up next to your paper, put a little hole at each end of the staple, and then just stick one staple through there and staple it yourself. If you don't have a stapler that will reach. Or you can use the three hole pamphlet stitch, um, and that will sew it together too. So, but I'm just going to do this just because I think it will be a little bit quicker. So long as I can figure out how to line it up. I haven't used this in forever. I should have probably tried it before. Let me see. I'm gonna grab this piece of paper and see where it staples. Because I'm not sure exactly. Okay, let's see. All right, it looks like you just kind of line it up right with the front. Some staplers staple back a little bit. I'm gonna start in the middle. And then I'm going to do one at each end. Okay, so there we go. So we've got it put together. You can put together any, you know, with anything that you have. Alrighty. And then what we're going to do is we are just going to start with the outside cover. And we will just open it up and choose two colors to paint it with. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do mine pretty much like like the way that I did this, um, just because it's easier. I didn't have to make a bunch of decisions. So I'm gonna do the outside cover, orange, red, and yellow. And because we're going to cover the whole paper, you do need um, a decent amount. And we're going to use the same colors throughout. Um, and so if you have some extra, that's okay. You're going to use it. I forgot the yellow, so I had to go grab that real quick. So you just need one of these expensive pink palettes here. My bottle is clogged. 
I don't think this is going to be a 15 minute craft with me. I think it's going to wind up being a little bit longer than that. So we'll just, but this is just, and actually, I think I found the brushes that I used when I made this years ago. So we're just going to take some red and some orange and we're just going to kind of paint it, pounce it, and get this get this cover painted. Now this is just a it's just a quick paint. Don't I don't want to get I don't want to get that paint on the inside though. Um, don't worry about like exactly what it looks like. You just want to randomly cover it. Okay, I've got a little bit of yellow now. Grab a little bit more. I kind of wanted to put the yellow on towards the end just because it blend it will wind up getting blended in so much um, if I put it on the bottom so there was no point. Now you can leave some of your white um, paper behind. It doesn't have to be completely covered. Um, I like to you know leave white on some and on some I like to just get them really well covered. And that's just to make them just a touch different because I'm going to use the same colors throughout the book. And so there, I'm going to, I'm going to put a little more yellow on this side. And there we go. Now that's done. Now I'm going to make that little look a little bit I didn't want the brush strokes on there um, okay now what we need to do is we need to give this a quick dry and I will be right back okay I'm back and oops just a minute I unplugged my light to plug in the heater there we go um, so this is pretty well dry so what I'm gonna do now is we have this opened up completely, I'm gonna flip it right over. Now see, I got some on there. That's okay because this part is also going to be the red, the orange, and the yellow. Now this is our little folded in half piece here. And so we're gonna make sure that that's opened up nice and flat. That's our tall folded piece. So just have it opened nice and flat and we're gonna do the same thing. We are just going to pounce our colors on here and by doing the outside and the middle side the same colors what happens is if either time you get the you get the paint on there um you know going over the edge and getting on the other side um it's okay because they're the same colors now you want to make sure that you don't let these little flaps lift off you want to go up and down so that we're not really getting much of this you might get a little bit of it um, you might get a little bit under there, which won't really make that much of a difference. It won't make any difference. You know, this is all just very random anyways. But we do want to have the separations of colors. So, let's see, on this one I'm just going to do it not quite as, not quite as covered. Partly because I like them to be different. And partly because I'm running out of paint and I don't really want to get any more paint out right this second. Because this is what I need right now. I'm not going to do any more red right this second. So there we go. So now we have this one looks like this. And this one looks like this. And yet we used the same colors. So I'm going to also now dry this one. And um, then we will see here um then we'll move on to the next colors so i will be back wait a minute let me look at this yeah we're going to move on to the next colors be back in just a second as soon as i get this dry okay i'm back so now as we have our book opened up we have the front done we have the inside done now we're going to switch to blue and green and you choose your own colors and you can use two colors three colors you can use as many colors as you want you can paint it any way you want because this whole thing is just literally it's just for fun whoops sorry about that and so you just play with it 
Alrighty, so I have some blue and some green. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna take a piece for masking and we are going to open up one side of our middle and we are going to put our divider or I mean our mask right in there so that we don't get any paint on that side and then we're also going to take a piece and put it here now if you want you could tape this down um, you'll want a tape that's not going to stick to it and I'm just gonna line it up there and hold it I'm gonna let just a titch of the orange kind of show through so that I know I don't have a white line between the two but not much and actually you want to be very careful because you don't want it to stick out the other side of this so you so you do want to line it up pretty good and then we're just going to again I'll just start with the green and do it exact now in this case now that you have your red on the on the opposite side of this on the table now you're going to want to be careful not to move the paper and get this green on the outside of your booklet but like I said if you do you do it's not a big deal if you don't like it just cover it up with a little bit of paint okay so we put the green on first and now I'm gonna put some blue on Just like that and that's done this really is the, the I think the longest part of this whole thing is the drying process and if you don't have give this a quick look that looks good don't have a lot of problems there I'm gonna remove that piece of paper and I'm gonna leave that one there and I'm gonna give it a quick dry while we chat for a minute um, so I did the green first on this one and then on the other side I'll do the blue first with the green on top and that will kind of give it a different look just depending on which color you put on top so um, I did green and blue so next time I'll do blue and green and maybe make it a little darker maybe make it a little lighter or do them both the same it really doesn't you know you make choices um, so and you don't even have to use the same like I use the same sets of color I use two sets of color throughout the book um, but you can do every single page a different set of colors so we're just gonna get this good like this and uh, as soon as, and if you don't this is a heat gun which we got this heat gun in our builder stash and craft after we saved for it but um what was I going to say? Actually, we got a black one. This is a different one. But um, but you don't have to have a heat gun. If you need something to dry with, if you have a blow dryer, they work perfect. The only thing you need a heat gun for is to melt things. So if you're going to do something like embossing powder or something that you need to melt, you need a heat gun. If you're just looking to dry something, you don't need a heat gun at all. So now what we're going to do is I am going to flip this over. No, I really do want to put it... Even though that's not perfectly dry, I'm going to peel it apart shortly so it's not going to stick to itself. So I'm going to put this right here, fold this over, and then take this one. I'm going to turn this over this way because it's easy. It'll be easier for me to hold on to it. What am I doing? Putting it in the wrong spot. And because this is all wet, I don't really want to put that on there right now. So I'm going to use the other side of that piece of paper. And then don't forget you can keep these pieces of paper for collage for another piece of artwork. Just because you've used them like this and they get something on them does not mean that they're garbage. Okay, so we have our mask on there. So we decided we were going to do blue first this time. And then green. 
Okay. And this will just, this side will be, I think, a little darker than the other. Unless I leave more white show through. If I leave more white show through, then it will probably be, I moved that, a little lighter than the other side. So it's all just about, you know, playing around with it, getting different looks with just a few colors of paint, just by the way that you layer them. That's enough blue. It's definitely enough blue because it's very wet now. This one's going to take me a few minutes to dry. I'm going to get it up in that corner too, or you know, like in the crease, you want to make sure you get some paint there. Alright. Okay, so there we go. Now that page is done, and I'm going to dry that page. And with this one, I'll let you go, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have this dry, and so what we have now is we have our whole center done. There's the center. We have our little flip this way. We have our little flip this way, and the outside is also done. So now what we have left to do is we have this piece, and I usually leave our little half a page flipped to the inside on one, and then we have this piece, and I leave it flipped to the outside on the other. And, and you don't you can leave them both to the outside, both to the inside, you know, however you want to do it, but that's just how I do it. Um, and so then what we're going to do here is we are just going to, we have our half a page, we don't need to do any masking right now, because this whole thing, these are red, so this one's going to be the blues. When this opens up, we've got the dark, or the lighter blue on this side, so this was the one with the green on the bottom and the blue on the top so this is what's going to open up to first whatever <laughs> i'm going to do the dark blue on, or do the blue on the bottom and the green on the top here so that it's opposite of this one and i need to grab just a little bit more paint to do that and we're going to need to do the other page too so put out as much as i want so we decided blue first and green second. And again, you can make it as dark as you want or as light as you want by depending on how much you put on your paper. And on the other one, I had other colors also. Um, I had some purple, I think, in there. And I just didn't want to have to try and figure it out. So I just decided to do the two colors. But... It's just so simple to do these that, like I said, I think the drying time is the most. And I thought that some of you might have fun with this. These would be fun inserts for your journals. If you don't have a stapler that reaches to the middle, you don't want to put a pamphlet stitch on it. Um, you know, you don't want to try and poke holes in it to put a staple in. Um, make it smaller so that it's small enough that your regular stapler reaches to the center. And then it will be small enough to fit inside of a journal all by itself. So I'm going to leave quite a bit of white on this one. And I think I just made this look a lot like the next page because I left the white on that one, but that's all right. So we've got that, and it's going to need to be dried. Yeah, I was going to not. I'm going to dry it real quick. Oh, we can chat. What can we chat about? So I'm hoping to try to start the my Bohemian Butterfly book um, soon. I have a few things going on right now, and so um, it might not be for a week or so. But while you're waiting, you can go over and watch Sonia Stepto's channel. She's done a Everything Wings book, and now she's doing a, a Bohemian book, which is really cool. Um, mine won't be like that. I mean, she's got she's just got the talent when it comes to putting together the pictures and the, just what I yesterday she put like a scarf on a lady and you know like over her head it looked so pretty and I don't think I would have thought of it for one thing and even if I had I don't think I could have figured it out so um 
you can get some great ideas that Sonia Stepto and um, she's been doing some craft with me's so this is gonna be a long craft with me usually I do them short because if I do them for 15 minutes I can upload them right from my phone this one will take me the way it's been going lately this will probably take me 20 hours to upload but you'll get it at some point and you won't even know you're waiting for it so it's not that big of a deal when you live in the country and you just can't get fast internet that's just how things go so but usually my craft with me's that's why they're 15 minutes and they're standard definition so they're a little fuzzier because they go straight from the phone right to youtube ready to go and um so they're not high definition but they they look good enough they're not they're not that bad Alrighty, so we have that one done so we are now going to transfer to the back side just open the whole thing up this one folds in so i want this one to fold out Am I getting too much paint on the edges? It doesn't matter because we're going to stencil and everything too. Normally I would wipe up my paint underneath first, but we're just going to wing it. Alrighty, so now what we've done is we've just opened up to the last back section. We have this one here that goes like that, so that one opens in. This one's going to open out, and I'm just going to use what paint I have left to finish this page. So it might be even kind of light because there's no point I don't have to make it super dark although I'll have to remember when I figure out the stenciling if this page is going to be very white I'll want to make sure that I black stencil on it not white stencil so I'll have to kind of look at that and see. So maybe I do want to get as much paint as I have so it's not too, too light. Because you do the pages every other one, black and white stenciling. There we go. And so now we have this one just like that. Now we're going to do these in red. I'm going to dry this first, and then I will be right back because my battery is going dead. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I'm back, and this is what we have so far. So we have our front done, and as we open it up, we're done here. We still have to finish this piece. This is done. This is done. This is done. And then we come over here and we have this piece to do. So the way that we're going to do these to make it the easiest is we are going to take a piece of copy paper and we're going to slide it under here. And I've already drawn the line, so we're just going to slide it under here and we are going to draw a line as close across the top and across the bottom and then we're going to come out about a half an inch. And the reason we're going to do that is because that way we can slide it over. This is going to be our mask. We're going to go like this. And like this. Okay. And that way we'll be able to slide it in. Now the only thing is I need to make sure, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold this back. So if I need to adjust it, I can. Okay, so now what we have is we put it here and we drew that line and we came out an extra half of an inch and we cut that. What that's gonna do, now that we open this up, these are gonna be our masks for the top and the bottom and they're gonna overlap, we went a half an inch so that they would overlap here just a little bit so that we wouldn't get a bunch of, of paint in that crack. And then we're just going to line it up just like that so that we can paint. And then we'll take one of our other scrap pieces of paper and put it here like this. And so see this paper is now overlapping where we where we did that. So that just makes it better for our painting process. 
and I'm going to turn it this way because the one that I'm going to need to hold down is this one. So I'm going to turn it this way so that I can kind of hold that in place. And the reason we want to really go around the top and the bottom is so that we don't have too much extra sticking out so that our color doesn't stick out too much. And again, now we're back to get my beads here. We're back to red, orange, and yellow. I'm just going to get some of this on my beautiful, expensive palette. And I will tell you, this type of palette works the best because you can, you know, you can mix your paints on it. You know, I have palettes that have the little wells, and those are nice for some things. But, you know, sometimes um, you just, you want to mix your colors or you want a lot of color. Or you have, like I have in this case, a really big paintbrush that doesn't want to fit in those holes. So, remember when you have a lid on something save it alrighty so what I need to paint now I want to make sure that I'm out to the edge of this looking at my edge here and my top and my bottom making sure that I'm gonna paint my whole area and so there we go We'll start with orange and yellow. And I'm going to kind of do the top. And then I'll line up my bottom better. And you don't have to be so heavy handed with the paint. I'm just using some old paints that are lying on my bottom here. It's okay if I kind of, I don't know that I want to say waste them, but you know. Now, do I want to put some red on that? I'm thinking no. I like the orange and the yellow. I'm going to put just a little bit more yellow. And... We are done with that one. All we have to do is dry it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this. I'm going to do the back side exactly the same way. Might put a little red in it or something, but I'm going to line my papers up and do the back side and dry that one. And then I will be back so we can start stenciling. Okay, I'm back again. And I've done the same thing to the other side as we just did. And so, and I've got that dried. And so now, this is what we have. We have our cover, and then when we open it up, we have this. And we did have some leakage on both sides when I did that. And it is what it is. And then we have this, and this, and this, this, and this, and this. So that is the basis of our painted part of our book. The only thing left to do is to stencil. So I start by opening up, laying it out nice and flat to do the cover first. And then I just choose two stencils. You can make your own stencils. I've shown that how to do that in different, um, in different videos. And you can make your own stencils with that without anything special. This right here I'm not even sure what it's for. It's um, it's just cardboard, you know. I mean, I think it's to put in a scrapbook as a background or something, because um, you know, it's not really a stencil. It's not plastic, but it works just, you know, as well as a stencil. And the more paint that you get on them, then the kind of the sturdier that they get. So if you have something, I'm going to turn it this way. It'll be easier to see where we've been. Um, Although, we'll cover up the orange. Um, so, you know, you don't think that you have to have, you know, anything special if you don't have a stencil. You don't need to go out and buy one. You can just cut your own. You cut them like you would cut a snowflake when you were younger. And if I remember, 
I will try and um, link one of those videos below so that you'll know what I'm talking about. But yeah, you can easily make your own stencils and these don't need to be anything special. And now I'm just gonna use a sponge. This is just a makeup sponge I got at the Dollar Tree. They're a buck a piece. They're really not necessarily worth it. Um, they are kind of nice to hang on to, but just get the regular white makeup sponges. They work just as well. One thing about stenciling is make sure you don't have a huge glob of paint on your sponge. You can work as much paint into your sponge as you want to, but if you leave a big glob of paint on there, um, you're gonna get it under your stencils. And then the biggest thing is just try and hold your stencil as still as possible and do a like a pressing pounce I don't know how I want to say this but you know a lot of times my my thing is to do this okay when you do that you really get just a lot of lightness and you have to constantly keep going back over the same places so if you just you, you know you don't want to have too much paint on your sponge that you're squishing it under your sponge and that's going to happen at a certain point you know I mean that's going to happen at times anyways but if you have your sponge just nicely painted up and um, then you just press straight down and come straight up don't rub it all because rubbing makes it get underneath the stencil going back and forth so you want to go up and down and now it's getting to the point where I'm pressing quite hard to get the paint out so it's time to load it up again and so just get some paint on there but see there's lots of paint on there I don't want to see that so I'm going to just kind of press up and down get it worked in so I don't have any great big spots of paint and start again and also when you do it this way, you can kind of stick to where the stencil is instead of getting it, you know, like just randomly all over the place because you're doing this, um, you know, you can put it right where you need it. And get that paint out of there and get it right on your paper. And this takes a while. And I just moved it, so let's move it back. And again, I've got a lot of paint right there. Definitely need to get that worked in. There we go, that looks better. And then just keep going till we get the whole thing done. So, thank you very much all of you for watching. I really do appreciate all of your comments and your views. And this is a nice process for me because I stay home and take care of my dad so I have uh, I've worked all my life until 15 years ago I started staying home to take care of my mother her kidneys failed and I've been home ever since because after she passed I still had Papa to take care of and so when I found YouTube this was just a really great release for me to give me something to do and feel like I'm accomplishing things and I never expected it to really quite I when I first started I just did it to join a challenge it was a challenge of Sonia Steptos actually I've known her ever since I first started here that's when I first met her and so but it has really it's a good thing, you know, if you're home by yourself and, you know, or, or you you know, you have to stay home for some reason. Um, and you think you might want to try doing some videos? Go for it. I started by just uploading onto my phone. And in the beginning, I think I could do up to 10 minutes. Now I think I can do 15. I don't know how to do any more straight from my phone. But, um, and then it, you just push the button like send and you just pick YouTube and you just send it there and um, it's really not that hard there's lots of videos on how to do it so there we go now doesn't that make a difference of where we started and then what we're gonna do um, is give it a quick dry and then we're gonna put the white on the outside I do both of the stencils that I chose one in black and one in white 
This is not the one that I used before, so we're going to see what it looks like. Hopefully it looks nice. And there we go. So now we're going to go to white. And I'm going to just flip this palette over and use the other side. And put, whoa, I'm running out of space here. And we're going to put some white on here. worked in there. Now this white is a lot thinner than the black. So hopefully we're going to be able to see it. But again, we don't want that big thing there. And even I have to remind myself to not do that. Alright, so let's just kind of line it up some way and start. And because I chose it, there's no point in looking at it because it's what I chose. So I've already started. I need to finish. So I'm going to just go ahead and keep on with it. I was tempted to lift it up and see what it looked like. But whether I liked it or not, I have to use it. So, but yes, and, and if you do videos um, and you'd like me to see them, you can send me an, an email or um, or even leave a comment in one of my videos and just let me know, you know, what video you've done and I will try and go and watch it. So because I don't, even though I subscribe to a lot of my subscribers, um, I have so many that the feed goes so fast that if I don't see your video right away in my feed, um, then I don't see it because it moves down the list so far. And I don't really have lots and lots of time um, to watch videos. So, But I do actually in the evenings. Um, I watch a lot of videos, but I watch them on my TV. And so I can't comment. But I can leave a thumbs up sometimes, depending on which TV I, I'm watching. Um, but... You know, but I've seen so many wonderful videos that different people have done. And that's the thing about this community is just, you know, there are just so many different ideas and, you know, different takes on exactly the same thing. You know, and you think, wow, you know, and I love it when you leave me comments and, you know, you leave tips or tricks because a lot of them I've never thought of or I've never heard of. So, and then other people, too, that are watching the channel, they read the comments, and, you know, you give them good ideas. No, Pee-wee. And so, there we go. That's how that, and isn't that really cool? I love it. I just love it. And so, then what we're going to do is give that a quick dry. And, Pee-wee, stop. There just possibly might be a bird outside or a squirrel or something. That's what she's always thinking. She's got a little bit of beagle in her. No, no, that's enough. My husband's in the other room playing video games. They probably hear him talking to his brother. So there we go. We're going to call that good. And so now we have our cover. And then from there, we're going to open it up, and then we're going to choose what do we want to do and what color do we want it to be. So let's start here with the black. And then once we have the black done, then we're going to do this. No. Yeah, we'll do that with the white. Okay, so we're going to do this with the black. So we're just going to set it on there. And we don't need to do any kind of masking because we're doing that whole page. And so we'll just get some black on our sponge. And 
and I think what we'll do is I will um, finish this one up and we'll do the white part too and then um, I will probably do the rest of the stenciling and then come back and just show you what it looks like so because um, it does take a little while but as you can see really I mean I've had to stop so that I could dry or so I could recharge my phone um, but you know it really when it really comes right down to it you're gonna have whatever the length of this video is and you know maybe another 20 minutes or something is about how long it took me completely to do this because each of the dry times was only just a few minutes it doesn't take that long to dry stenciling doesn't take that long to dry when you do a sponge um, because the paint that you're putting on there is pretty you know it's it's not very wet at all so it just takes a second to dry a stenciled part I have a big old chunk of there we go and so let's see I need to put a link for how to make your own stencils it seems like there was something else I was talking about too I'll watch through and I'll try and make sure I put any links I said down below and if I don't remember to put them down there um, please leave, a, leave in your comment that I forgot to put it and I will add it and I will send you a link so that you don't have to come back and find it. But then everybody else will be able to, to see it too. So because you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money in order to be able to craft. So I have lots of videos on, on how to make different things that you can buy at the store. But you can make yourself just as reasonable and a lot of times just with things you have around the house or you may have to go pick something up but you know not spend as much as you would for buying the thing at the craft store and the other thing is make your own see if you like that type of project and you know because the thing is a lot of times you'll go out you'll buy everything to do a project because it looks really cool and you want to do it and you find out you don't like it so if you do your own product and you find out I really love this then you can go to the craft store and spend a little bit more on the real thing if you feel like you want to I really prefer using as much of my own things as possible just because it makes me feel good that it's you know I kind of made so much of what it is that I'm using so there we go and see my stencil has moved but that doesn't matter because I'm working over here right now and there we go love that I love this stencil it's so cool and I got them like I said I got them at a dollar store and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our little masky parts so that we just are gonna stencil on our orange. I need to flip this over. Put that right on there. Grab my white stencil. Put it on there. And our white sponge. And do this one. A little bit too much paint on there. Now, once once you get this done, you can add pockets, you can add quotes, um, you know, words, anything that you would like to decorate them up as. And, you know, just kind of go from there to a certain extent. Um, most of mine, I have not done anything with because I just like looking at them. I just think they're kind of fun. 
Of course, when I did these, I did not do journals at all. So I didn't really have anything kind of to do with them. And there we go. My white paint is a little bit light. I wish it was a little bit more. It's a little bit translucent. I wish it was more opaque, but it still shows up. And so there we go. Now we have our stenciling done there. Our front and back is done. And so then what I'm going to do is because this whole page is black on the next one, I'm going to do the whole page as white. Although, in looking at this, I don't know how well the white's going to show up. And when I come to here, this will be black. Oh, the, oh, the white showed up on there. It is so hot in my house. All right, I'll have to decide. Well, I'm because I you want to do like black and then white. Let's see what we did with this one. This one was black, and when we opened it up to the middle, ah, oh, I did the middle of that one black too. I'm gonna do the middle of this one black because I really want to. And then I'm going to see if I can find a more opaque white to do these with. So I'm going to do black and white. And then I'm going to do black and white. So I will be back in a minute and I will show you how the whole thing looks like done. So I'll see you in a second. I am back and I have it all finished. I have to say that I like this one better because I like my stencils better, but also one thing that I forgot to do was on here I did the whole thing in black dots and then white swirls. And then when I changed it, I did black dots and black swirls and white dots. So I changed the colors of the stencils um, you know, like here I have white swirls, here I have black swirls, here I have black dots, and, well, there's black dots, black dots, and white dots. Um, instead of all of the swirls being black, here the swirls are white, the dots are black. So, um, I forgot to change, you know, like go back and forth with the stencils and do some black and some white. So on here, I have the, the little star stencil is all in white and the swirl stencil is all in black. So I like that switching too, because um, it just kind of gives your eye something different as you're flipping through it. But, so we will just look at the way that this one turned out though. So we did all of this except for a couple little bits together. And um, so here's what it looks like as we open it up. And then we open it to the next page. And then we open it up this way. And then it goes like this. And then it goes like this. And then it goes like this. And then like this. And then like this. But I really do like the way it turned out. I think these are just fun. I just love the way that they turn out. And it's just fun when you flip through how it looks like it's different pages, but it really isn't different pages. You know, this is three pieces of paper, two whole pieces and two half a pieces. I mean, how fun is that? So I really hope that you like this video. And if you make some, have a good time with it. To see how many pieces I have to put together because I have no idea how many how many times I stopped and started this. But thanks again for stopping by. I really do appreciate all of your time. And um, if you'd like to leave a comment, please do that. If you get a chance, watch the commercials on some of them. That helps a little bit. And um, thanks for stopping by. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.